All right, uh, the next, notice that the next four parts are actually optional. So if you want to, you can just skip and go straight, uh, continue straight with part seven uh, about non-homogeneous linear differential equations. So now, uh, but I'm still going to record all these um, uh, explanations for why this method works and how it was uh, originally derived. Although I have to admit that uh, the method explained in this lecture notes prepared by Dr. Tan is something that I've never seen before. So when I taught differential equations to math students, I taught a completely different method. So this is a bit unusual to me, but it kind of, it is actually a nice method, yeah. So I, I've never seen it before, but I, I do admit that it is kind of cool. So because it has like a very, very interesting um, uh, little tricks. Okay, so I, I hope that, that you're going to like the, the, this method. So if you, if you're going to watch the, the, this lecture, of course. So um, now, so first of all, notice that uh, if y equals zero, then we are going to get a solution, right? So y equals constant zero is a solution of the, this differential equation, right? So with that in mind, we are going to divide uh, our differential equation by, by y, right? So j just bear that in mind that, uh, you know, uh, that in the end, uh, we should, you know, include y equals constant zero to the list of all possible solutions, right? So because now we are divided by it, which means that now it can't be zero, right? So, uh, notice something interesting here, right? So what is this uh, y prime over, uh, over y? And this is nothing else but the derivative of logarithm of y, right? Because if you differentiate ln ln y, then first you differentiate uh, ln of y, and its derivative is one over y, right? One over y times the derivative of whatever is inside the ln, which is y prime, right? So y prime over y is in fact the derivative of the logarithm y. Uh, but what is the second derivative? Right, so what is d2 over dx2 of ln y? Right, so I've got to differentiate y prime over y. And this is according to the product, to, to the, sorry, to the ratio rule. This is y double prime times y minus y prime times y prime divided by y square, uh, which is first term is uh, y double prime divided by y. Right, and the second term, oh, y square, y prime square divided by y squared, so minus y prime divided by y squared. Right, so it means that if now I introduce the new variable z, which is a logarithm of y, then y prime over y becomes just z. And y double prime over y becomes what? Becomes uh, z prime plus, this is z, plus z squared, right? Well, because, you know, moving z squared to the left-hand side, I, I get the equation above. So uh, y prime divided by uh, y is z prime plus z squared. So it means that if I do that, my differential equation uh, gets the, the following form. It's a times uh, dz dx plus z squared plus bz plus c equals zero. And this is a separable differential equation, which we can essentially solve, right? So uh, what we did here, we kind of introduced a little neat trick that uh, allows us to reduce a second order differential equation to a first order differential equation, and not just any order, any differential equation, but a separable differential equation. And now we can solve it. All right, so um, basically the, this is what we just obtained. Now in order to solve it, we need to move everything with uh, x to the right hand side and everything with z to the left hand side. And doing that, we get something like this. Uh, well, we get something like this. So this is a simple algebraic uh, transformation. So I, I hope I don't have to explain this, right? But then we just solve it, right? Uh, and when we solve this, 
uh, we are going to get this so the integral of the left hand side is going to be essentially minus x plus the uh, sum sum constant right and it remains to solve the integral on the left well but the integral on the left so notice that uh, the denominator uh, of that integral is just it's the same quadratic form as the characteristic equation right so compared to the characteristic equation so a lambda square plus b lambda plus c now the, the only difference is that we replaced lambda with z right but essentially the denominator of the, this uh, thing is uh, is our characteristic equation right so and basically um, in order to solve such an integral where we have a fraction and the denominator is a quadratic form, uh, we need to uh, change it to so-called partial fractions. And uh, the partial fraction decomposition, in fact, depends on whether the quadratic polynomial a z squared plus b z plus c, whether it has two real roots, whether it has a repeated real root, or whether it has complex roots. Right, so. There are three different cases. Um, if we have a repeated root, then it means that our quadratic polynomial um, is really a complete square. And we have distinct real numbers and we have two com complex uh, conjugate numbers. So uh, maybe let me mention that in this case, we have something like a Uh, z minus lambda squared. In this case, uh, uh, well, we do have well this, and in um, so, which is why when we do antiderivative, we're going to get uh, essentially the division by z minus lambda. In this case, we're going to in the when we do the antiderivative, we're going to have the uh, two logarithms, and in the third case. Well, in the third case, it's probably, I don't think that this really helps. So it's, it's probably going to be clearer that if you understand that the third case uh, really means that you have something like a times z minus b um, to a well, plus squared plus something positive. Well, something positive. Right, so you, you, you have uh, z in the square plus something else, and this is looks like the pattern for uh, inverse tangent. So here the h derivative is going to be the inverse tangent. Okay, so uh, in the next three sections, I'm going to just uh, do these cases one by one. All right.